Today I'm back to show you another boozy cocoa bomb idea. I am first starting off with a Grand Marnier ganache that has cream, butter, honey, salt, two different kinds of chocolate chips, a dark and milk chocolate, and of course Grand Marnier. Now for this, we want to start by adding the salt and honey into the chocolate chips and then we're going to set that aside while we heat up the cream. Now, even though they are called boozy cocoa bombs, if you want to remove all of the alcohol content when you throw the cream on the stove, you could add in the Grand Marnier right away or before it comes to a simmer so that you remove all of the alcohol content. If you would like the alcohol to remain, add in the alcohol once the cream is already warmed up so that you don't cook off the alcohol content. It is up to you. Just know one way or the other you'll be adding more flavor or actual alcohol. Now you want to pour the hot cream and Grand Marnier mixture over the chocolate chips, honey, and salt and let it sit for a minute or two before you begin to give it a whisk. Because this is a small batch, I'm just starting off with my whisk, though you could go right in with an immersion blender if you want to. Once you have a homogeneous mixture, then it is time to add in the butter, and for the silkiest, smoothest ganache possible, you will want to switch to an immersion blender at that point. When the ganache is done, I like to pour it into a small sheet pan or container lined with plastic wrap so that I can fold the plastic wrap over the top so a skin doesn't form and leave it at room temperature to cool completely. You will know that it is completely done when you can take a spoon and pull up ganache just like you see me doing here. It should be pliable and not hard, but it also should not be runny. Time to make the cocoa bomb shells. Because I'm going to make a lot for family and friends today, I am putting my chocolate over a double boiler. So I have about an inch of water that I will just bring to the barest minimum simmer. And then I have my chocolate, which I will stir until it is completely melted in the bowl on the top. going to do two different decorations for my bombs today. One of them I have some edible gold powder which I am just dipping my clean finger into and then I'm swirling it around the mold to create random swirl patterns that the chocolate will pick up once you pour it in. You could do this of course with a paintbrush or a sponge or anything else you have on hand but hey fingers are easy to use and easy to clean. So I just went ahead and did that through half of my molds and the other half I just left without this gold touch.
of my molds already. The ones without the gold are going to get gold sugar sprinkles and some little star sprinkles after we are done. And so I have everything including a bench scraper and a piping bag with chocolate in it. I like to use a piping bag because I feel like it gives me the most control and it is quite clean. There are no drips or anything as you are going through, but you can do whatever technique works for you. If you have enough chocolate, I think it's a good idea to go about halfway up the mold. And then after every mold has chocolate in it, it is a good idea to go through and pull that chocolate up to the very edge of the mold using a small spoon, an offset spatula, or any other tool that you find works for you. we set the molds aside we want to tip them upside down on some parchment paper so that all of the excess chocolate comes out and we can then reuse that for later and we also don't end up with super thick weird cocoa bomb shells so just dump out all of that excess and then scrape the top of the molds just to clean them up really nicely so you have as smooth of an edge as possible before they harden. Once you have everything cleaned up, just set them aside on your counter or if you're in a hurry in your refrigerator and leave them for about 20 minutes. When you go to pop the shells out of a silicon mold, make sure to peel the mold away from the chocolate without putting any pressure, if possible, on the chocolate. This will help ensure that the chocolate won't crack or fracture, um, and then try to use your fingers to pull it up rather than use a lot of force to push from the bottom. Again, you want to be as gentle as you can with the chocolate. If you have different molds, um, plastic molds, or some of the, I think they call them three-part molds, that will work differently. Um, you should be able to pop them out um, differently, but for the silicon molds, make sure you're peeling the mold away from the chocolate. If any of your hemispheres of chocolate have a little bit of a jagged edge on the bottom, just use a small blowtorch against something metal, like uh, I'm using my bench scraper here. Otherwise, if you don't have a blowtorch, you can heat up the bottom of a pot or pan on your stove and then clean up the edges by slightly melting the chocolate just at the edge on that pot or pan. And then you can just set them aside until all of them are done and you're ready to fill. In addition to the Grand Marnier ganache from before, I'm adding in some fresh orange zest as well as some mini marshmallows. You could leave out the marshmallows or use different marshmallows, you don't need to add the orange zest. This is really up to you. I really like that little 
addition of freshness and brightness that the orange zest brings and it's hot cocoa so how could you leave out marshmallows <laughs> but again personal choice do what tastes and feels good to you just add everything in remember the ganache may look like it isn't that much but these cocoa bombs are quite large and they are individual portions so keep in mind that however much ganache you are putting into the bomb will be added to the amount of chocolate that is in the shell itself so you don't want to overdo it don't try to fill it up halfway or anything crazy like that After everything is filled, go through again and use that same heating method that you did before to slightly melt the edge of the opposite side, opposite pair um, of the hemisphere that you will use to create your cocoa bomb so that when you put it on top of the bottom filled sphere, hemisphere, they will match together at the edges and the warmed edge will melt into that um, cooler bottom edge and it will create a beautiful cocoa bomb sphere. If you did want to add any sprinkles or things to the top of the cocoa bomb, you can use some extra melted chocolate or coating chocolate to drizzle over the sphere once it is finished. And then while the chocolate is still warm and tacky, you want to add on your sprinkles. Again, I just created this gold here by adding a little bit of edible gold powder into some regular granulated sugar. because you need a pretty big mug to make these cocoa bombs. Sometimes they can be hard to find the right cup in your home, or if you do, you can maybe not have a lot of room to drop it in. So I recommend using a long spoon, put it under the cocoa bomb, and then just gradually use the spoon to drop it in and then carefully take your spoon out, and then that way nothing is broken or dropped in. Heat up some milk until it's quite warm, pour it over the top of your cocoa bomb, and then stir really well until everything is mixed together. Because this cocoa bomb is made with ganache, make sure you continuously stir until all of that ganache has melted and is fully incorporated before you enjoy your Grand Marnier ganache cocoa bomb drink.
thank you guys so so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing if you haven't already and i will see you again soon for more adventures in my kitchen have a great day